The traditional way of working with an HDR application is to use brackets. And a bracket is simply taking the time to allow the camera to shoot different exposures. Now, most typically, this is done from a tripod or a braced camera position so the camera doesn't have any movement. And by adjusting the exposure time, we can get a series of underexposed and overexposed images that show the full dynamic range of the scene. What Aurora HDR is going to do is merge those together and really take advantage of the best parts of each one of the source brackets. Let me show you. To take advantage of this, I simply click Open Image. If you don't see this welcome dialog, you can also just choose File, Open. It'll open up the file browser. Let's go up a level here and then explore bracketed photos. In this case, I have a series of five images that were captured in a low light situation. Here's the base exposure. And while this image shows a lot of detail, there's a section out the window that's totally lost. If I overexpose the image, I'm able to see some of the details that were currently pushed into shadows. And those come in handy. But it's everything in between that really tells the story. And by starting to underexpose, some of the details that were lost are brought back. So let's select all of those images and click Open. Aurora tells us a bit about each image. And I see, in this case, that I've got a wide dynamic range from about three and a third stop under to about four and two thirds stops over. Well, this is a lot of information. Now, if there's a bracket you don't want, you can just click on the X icon to remove it. But in this case, this is gonna come in handy. And since I was shooting this from a leaning position, I'm gonna choose auto alignment. While it's generally a good idea to use a tripod, I was traveling on vacation here and I didn't have my tripod with me. So what I had done is taken the camera and leaned into the doorway, bracing the camera against the doorway. It helps stabilize the shot for the slower exposure times, but it actually allowed me to not have to carry a tripod. Now in Aurora here, the auto alignment option is going to come in handy. It's going to make sure that those images perfectly align. From the settings menu here, you'll also see other options. We don't need to worry about ghost reduction now because nothing was moving in the image, but color denoise is a good option here for dealing with some of the underexposed areas. And I don't think I have any chromatic aberration in this particular image, so I'll leave it unchecked. Now, when ready, I can click Create HDR. This will take a little bit of time. Now, what's happening in the background is Aurora is opening up each image. It's comparing the images one to each other, making sure that they're aligned, and then merging the details together into a new 32-bit file. Now, this 32-bit file has significantly more information. Most cameras are capturing photos somewhere between 8 bits to 12 bits or 14 bits. And while bit depth might not be a term you're familiar with, it essentially equates to how much level of detail. And a 32-bit image has tremendously more details than the typical image that a camera captures in one exposure. All right, you can see here we've got a lot of great details brought out in the scene. Let's go ahead and maximize this window. And I'm going to hide the preset browser for a moment. Looking at the image, it's amazing how much we can see. From the foreground, almost all the way through the background, we've got detail. Now, using the sliders here, I can quickly recover some more detail. For example, pulling down the highlights here starts to recover some of the information outside. And I can pull that down while still lifting my whites and my general base exposure. Put a little bit of contrast in and we get richer blacks and more dynamic range. Watch how Smart Tone can further emphasize those mid-tones pulling them down just a little bit. All right, that looks great. From the color section, I can introduce a little bit of color contrast to add depth. And then from HDR Enhance, let's put a little bit of smart structure in, and it starts to further emphasize the details in the shadows. That looks great. Now, there's a lot more that we can do here with stylizing the image or adding glows or additional changes to tone or specific areas, 
but I think it's looking pretty good. The only change that I want to make is a little bit of darkening. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer and zoom in for a moment. Over here on the window, I want to darken this down. So I'll simply click with the paintbrush and choose brush. Now what I can do is paint. And if I click on the eyeball here, I can really see what I'm painting. Left bracket for a smaller brush. There we go. And we're just painting in the window to start. Now initially, it's going to be a very tight selection. And what we're going to want to do is feather or blend this so it's a little bit smoother. There we go. Not bad. Good. So now we've painted out the window and using the mask controls, I could adjust feathering. And you see that it softens that nicely as well as the density for the intensity of the mask. There we go. And that looks good. Now with that area selected, we're just going to turn the mask off and pull down the exposure ever so slightly. And you see that we can darken the area outside the window a little bit, put a little extra contrast in, and just a little bit more color. There we go. Now let's go ahead and zoom back out. And that little bit on the window, a small change, but just helps bring back a little bit more. In this case, I'm really satisfied with the overall image. So I'll choose File, Save, and capture the changes to an Aurora HDR file. We'll talk more about those options for saving a little bit later.